What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. We have another gig log for you today. Nothing too major going on today, just reception and dancing with up lights. So, should be fun. I don't even have any introductions. I'm just gonna like announce the bride and groom to their first dance and that's it. But I was going through prepping my stuff that I use to film and also my bags and I recently just posted the video on the Jetpack system and I might have inserted this clip in there uh, going over the new Jetpack, but I wanted to go over two things. One, the bag system that I use with my three different Jetpack bags and what I use to film all of these videos with. So what is all of the gear and everything that I use to get the awesome shots that you guys see so that you guys can understand what happens on the back end. And also, I'm not filming right now with my microphone setup that is new that you might have seen me using in the Jetpack video because I want to show you it with just the camera and then we'll be switching over to the mic system for the rest of this gig log to try and see what the audio is like is switching over to the new uh, road system. I will preference that I like the DJI better, but we'll get into that in a second. All right, so office craziness in here right now. If you guys haven't seen, I made a full video that goes through everything in my office, including that giant 50 inch curve display which is amazing for productivity. So these right here are two of my three jetpack bags that I use for all of my events. Again I have a three bag system. So we have my main DJ bag here. I believe this is a jetpack Prime. I've had this one for a while. I've had this since 2018. So I can't necessarily tell you what the details are on that bag. This right here is the Jetpack Snap. This is the new one. And this is my everyday bag. So we'll go through that real quick. But again, nice vibrant interior. I keep my little 13 inch computer right here. That is an HP Spectre 13 inch. Hello, baby girl. Of course, jetpack bags are set up awesome. We got a pen slot right here. We got a business card slot that makes it quick and easy to grab business cards when people ask. I keep a little thing of ibuprofen right here. Always important to have on here. In here is my iPod for doing cocktail, random USB cables, couple of earplugs, etc. Up here, I keep the charger for my computer. Again, this is my everyday bag. In here, sunglasses and a spare USB Type-C DJ cable. In here, we have a USB hub, just a little anchor hub, and a variety of other cables, USB Type-C cables, phone charger. That's everything that's in the Snap, the everyday bag that I take with me. Over to the main DJ bag. Again, nice vibrant interior to see everything. Business cards right here, pens right here. I actually store additional cables back behind the slot there. So I got um, RCA cables, RCA to aux cables, spare USB cables, stuff that you would need in a pinch. Um, again, down here we have headphone jacks. We have quarter inch to headphone jack cables. Like over here we have a uh, quarter inch to aux, uh, another headphone cable, spare USB type C cables. These are my musician earplugs. I keep them right there for when I am in loud environments. Another thing of ibuprofen right there. You know, you can't be having a headache. Up here, Vimoto LP2s. Headphones stored right there. I have a sound meter in this pouch. I have a spare charger for my camera batteries if I need to do that on an event. Spare granola bar and a phone charger. Then over here we have a first aid kit. Uh, lactate because I'm actually um, lactose intolerant. Another USB hub in here and spare USB cables that I might need. USB type C to USB type B. All your standard DJ backup cables. And then we have, uh, this one has a secondary pouch that stores all the computers. So I'll put my iPad in here, I'll put my paperwork in here, and I'll put my DJ computer in there as well. Then this right here is my last Jetpack bag. I love this bag because it actually fits the form and function of storing my shoes right there. This top pouch is where I store all of my colored pins that you might have seen me wear on my jacket so I can color code them. I have these awesome stiff things. They slide into your shirts and there's a magnet on the inside to keep them where they're at and uh, some hair gel and some cologne sit in this little pocket right here and then in the main pouch I can store all of my clothes so that is my main bag that I take for all of my clothes for my events and then I just bring on the hanger my shirt for the day and my sports coat for the day and that right there is my three bag system for all of my events it's something that I have in a routine and it's set up to basically not forget things because the last thing you want to forget is laptops your clothes and stuff like that so I know if I have all three of those bags and my shirt and my um, jacket my sports coat I'm all set and ready to go for my events. I add an additional bag and that's just a cooler that I fill full of water, Powerade, Gatorade, and Bang Energy drinks that we bring as well. Now, moving on to camera gear. Every video is filmed on this camera right here and that is a Canon G7X Mark III. I actually own three of these cameras. It is my favorite go-to shooting camera. It's got great low.
light quality. If you guys are looking for a camera to film your events with, I highly recommend the Canon G7X Mark III. It also has a mic input, so when you want to upgrade the audio quality, which you'll see later on in this video and in previous videos, you can do that. Over here on the shelf is my camera world. So this is where all of my cameras, I have a power strip built in right here that I can charge my Canon G7X batteries right here for my cameras. Then we have the microphone setup right beside it here. This is the Rode Wireless Pro system, and this is brand new that I'm just starting to use. I haven't, I've had it for a while now, but basically you have a receiver this right here it's the Rode wireless go to and this basically has this headphone jack kind of cable it goes into the side of the camera I velcro it to the side of the camera and this is what captures the signal from these mics right here and again this is just the little charging case that keeps everything nice and charged so these are actually the microphones that I would clip on me you might have seen them before there's also a input that I can input a lavalier to get even better quality mic audio as well so that's new that's more advanced and I'm really not efficient with it yet of course, we're not even using it right now for this video. This right here, though, is the thing I talked about in my last gig log. It is my GoPro rig setup. Uh, shout out DJ Bar. But basically, we have an anchor battery, and this thing's been beat the shreds and back. But this anchor battery has crap load of power. I literally charge this thing maybe one in every 10 events I do. We have an adhesive GoPro mount on the bottom. Then we have a threaded connection here to connect this to a tripod, which you guys have seen. I have the 13 foot tripod that we use now at our events. We used to use some of these smaller ones here that only go up to about seven eight feet so we use the big 13 foot one now for those high nice awesome shots then on the other side we have another gopro mount and we have uh the actual gopro mount itself this one is actually um broken to some degree but it still works and then we have a small little usb to usb type c cable to power the gopro the GoPro I use, they are, um, we actually have, I think, five of these in the company. I send these out with all of our guys to record all of our events. They are the GoPro Black 7 Series. So if you guys are interested, that's the ones we use for all of our events. You could get the newer models if you want, but the uh, Black 7 has really good low light, and uh, it only got better from there. So this is the ones we use because it's a little bit more cost efficient to buy the older models. And yeah, that's what we use. We record in 1080p at 30 frames per second. SD card wise, we use SanDisk Extreme 128 SD cards. You can record seven hours of footage on your GoPro with this. So pretty much it can record the whole entire event with no problem and you're good to go. For the main uh, camera, the Canon G7Xs, again, we're using SanDisk Extreme Pros. They're all 128 SD cards and it just makes it so much easier to have really big SD cards. But I did mention we record every single one of our guys takes these to their events to record their events. And we do that for multiple reasons. One, from a content perspective we can record the whole event and cut it up and put it in gig logs like this or post it on Instagram etc it gives us an awesome way to post all of our footage from our events to capture the moments that the guys are doing also it's really hard to shoot introduction footage so this gives us a way to do that and thirdly the reason that I don't hope we have to use is its quality insurance so if a customer claims we did X but we really did Y we have video recording that proves what we did we can show them exactly every single song we played at that event we can talk about how introductions happen if someone I don't know yanks one of our speakers down or pours a drink on the DJ's laptop we got it on footage the GoPro recorded the whole entire event so that's a little uh, bonus for why I use them so yeah there you go this is an old Canon G7X Mark 1 one of the first ever ones I filmed with you guys can if you're using the internal mics get these little poof things on top and it it really does cut down on pretty much any wind noise when you're outside and then lastly I have some Joby ones this is a brand new one I just got because this one is uh, kind of broken. I use the Joby tripods to hold this camera that I'm holding right now so that we can get some better kind of movement shots and also it makes it easier to quickly set down the G7X to record something as well. So yeah, there's a quick look at how we film all of our events. So now with the intro banter over, let's go check out what we're gonna be using for today's event, load up the truck and all that fun stuff. What do we have here? Some new equipment showed up. We got the JBL Purex 812s just showed up. No, those speakers are not actually for me. They're for the company. They're actually for our newest DJ, Jordan. He's getting some some upgraded speakers he's going to be actually buying the uh, 15 inch subwoofers off me the JBL PRX 715 XLF subs and those are his new tops to pair with those he's gonna have a pretty nice setup all right so I got to roll the up lights in here but we're not even using totems today I just normally store my totems in the trailer or I put them in our storage unit just because they're 
big bulk can take up a lot of room. People were noticing I do have these hung on these hooks. So this is actually a tie down hook and no, they do not come off the rails at all. They stay right here beautifully for the whole ride. They'd have to literally jump like 10 inches, but audio rack, Burfa, we store all of our cables in the back here. We got extra stands, Maui 44 G2s, nothing on the ceremony cart today. Again, very simple setup. And there we go, two uh, eight unit cases of both lighting S4s. I'm also bringing four of the IR4s and we're gonna rock it out today. Alrighty, we're on the road. Um, not as far as a drive as we had last week. It was about an hour and um, we're gonna be showing up with plenty of time. So, get on the road. We in downtown Durham. One thing with a trailer and a truck, not as convenient for uh, downtown use. So literally this is downtown right here, the main streets right there and uh, right here's the ballroom. So we're gonna get everything unloaded. It is windy today. Quickly unloading everything into the venue. Pretty sure we're not gonna have to put any of our cases back into the trailer. That's always a thing we gotta worry about. Grab my bang, my water, then I gotta go find parking. Alrighty, we managed. If you guys are in a downtown event, make sure you show up really early. Like I said earlier, we're not the one ceremony or cocktail, but we're still showing up two hours prior to the start of ceremony, mostly because of this situation. And then also, when you guys show up, I have a truck and trailer so it's hard to pull up, otherwise I would just drop Gabe off, but we found a spot to go ask the front man people at the hotel or the venue you're at where it is we can unload, and then secondly, how we can park. So managed to park about two blocks away, and basically I asked the hotel where we can park, and he said if you can find any two spots back to back, it's free parking on the weekend. So found two spots and uh, lock and load. So this is our corner for now. We got the speakers assembled, sitting on caster plates ready to roll out, but uh, we're pretty much just gonna roll everything straight out there and set up. What's up, what's up? We got everything set up. Get back there rocking. Again, we're trying out some new audio today. We got the lapel down here. Looks like it's working great. Uh, I'm gonna get Gabe behind the camera though. We're gonna walk out through everything we got set up today. It's our traditional normal setup, pretty simple though. So traditional setup as always, we have our custom built turntable booth, Rain 12s S9, custom LED sign right here, HP Spectra 15 inch laptop aj facade we're rocking the ld systems maui 44 g2 speakers as always pretty straightforward i mean you guys have seen everything back here uh we use audio technica 4000 3000 fourth gens microphones we have four ir4s right here we have 16 of the both lighting s4s around the room yamaha mixer back here 12 channel mixer dbx drive rack i did have someone comment on the last gig log i just posted asking about how we don't get feedback with our microphones when it comes to these speakers because i was practically standing right in front of them and the biggest thing honestly is having an external mixer and making sure your gain structure is proper. You never want to be adding anything to the overall mic, so you want to check with your mic that you're not peaking the output or the input when it comes to this mic itself. And you can easily do that on these mics by looking at the audio interface down here. When I'm talking into this mic right here, you're going to see two levels. Well, first off, ignore this top. This is actually a defective unit. The only it doesn't show our good, how good the signal is on the mic. But the uh, bottom one or the top bar here is how loud I'm speaking into the mic, and then the bottom is how loud is this outputting into our mixer. And we don't want these to ever go above zero dB. And then on the Yamaha up here itself, I would raise this up, but we don't want to go past zero on this as well, or zero on our master. And then beyond that, just making sure that you don't have your speakers cranked like all the way up to the point where they're gonna be feedback as well. You can take an extra step and get yourself a drive rack PA2. It has anti-feedback suppression, which is good in certain situations, but for the most part, we actually never use it. On occasion, we'll turn it on if um, we have someone that's doing toast with a very low volume or they're holding the mic down here, even though we told them to hold it up here, we'll turn that on to help with trying to allow us to be louder on the mics, but for the most part, we never actually use it. But that is an ad advantage to be able to EQ the speakers properly and to use anti-feedback suppression. But for the most part, that's how you avoid feedback with your mics. And then also positioning of your speakers. If you have traditional like tops, like 12 inch tops or 15 inch tops and someone's giving a toast and again, they're really quiet and you're trying to avoid feedback, just point the top away from where they're standing to again, help with feedback suppression. But for the most part, that's all you do. We got the GoPro rig ready to go for tonight. This is that 13 foot tall, I forgot to mention, it's actually hydraulic as well so like when you raise it up it doesn't like crash down it actually slowly comes down so this is cool we'll put this 13 feet in the air and get a really high shot with the gopro for tonight i feel like i've worked a few before you look familiar i see a lot of wins yeah i know same <laughs> first dance okay so is it 
Is it, so they're gonna come through this door here? Uh huh. Can you see them? Yeah, I, I, well, I can't see where I'm standing right now, but like I'll be out there doing the kind of introduction. Uh, the best man speech, my daughter is going to give a toast, and then she's gonna say, my mother and her two sisters, if you wanna say a few words. And as soon as we start walking up, you can start Uptown Funk. Okay. We'll look at each other like, what's going on? Okay. And then everyone who has practiced the dance will get up quickly gotcha. and rush, and we're gonna do. It's about two and a half minutes. Okay, so he's gonna say, he's gonna ask you guys to come up, or? So Robin is gonna say yes, my mother okay. and her sisters. Okay, so Robin's gonna say it. Yeah. Okay, cool. I just wanted to know who's gonna be talking. Yeah, and as but soon I'll have it. As who's ready to get this celebration started this evening? Is this side of the room ready over here? Are you guys ready? How about over here? Can we do a little better than that? Are you guys ready to get the celebration started? That's what I like to hear. My name is Rick. I'm gonna be your DJ tonight on behalf of Fusion Sound Lighting. Welcome to the 21 Seas Museum and Hotel. If you guys can please direct your attention over by the cake where our doors are. We have two very, very important people to welcome in this evening. Can everyone please put your hands together and make as much noise as you possibly can to help me welcome in Megan and Michael Ellis. Let's hear it for them. Keep your attention on them. They're gonna come right up here to the center of the dance floor to share their first dance together, officially, as husband and wife, and they chose an amazing song, Stand By Me, King Benny. <laughs>
And here's what the aftermath of a successful wedding looks like. Always, always do a once over. I don't care if you think you loaded out everything and you know you got everything, go back, do a once over. You gotta do it every time. Yeah, we're out. That is the wrap on the night. And that is downtown Durham for you. But yes, we are done in downtown Durham. Back to Greensboro, back to home. If you guys uh, made it to this point in the video, you know what to do. Hashtag squad in the comments down below. Hit the like button while you're at it. And if you're one of the 80% of the people that are watching this video that are not subscribed, sign in, hit the subscribe button. What are you doing, man? What, what, what are, you, are you doing? Hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. If you guys want the set list from tonight's wedding, the set list link is in the description down below for free. You guys can get a CSV file of the set list from this wedding. So peace out, keep the record spinning, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.